So the sun comes up over here, correct? Right. All right, so about what time in the morning does that start to uh, get lit up? Well, it's probably by, I mean, easy by 8 o'clock. Okay. And that's probably the earliest spot that gets uh, light? That corner is the earliest. Because okay. the sun goes right there. Okay. And then, so basically there. Well, and then it passes across here, here then, about like just that. A, probably about 20 feet from the tree line? Yeah, so when you get to about 3 o'clock, the sun is rotated around that way. Uh, maybe around then. Or maybe 4, it starts to dip below. So it would get a decent amount, unless you think it's too close to the woods. Well, that's why I'm saying keep it about 20 foot off. It's not going to interfere with what you're farming, right? Yeah, I could just leave all the pasture here alone. Okay, let's do that. Welcome back. I am here with Sam from Scrubland <laughs> Farms who did a late night bee delivery. He dropped a couple of nukes. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it does. Right? <laughs> <laughs> dropped a couple of nukes in Alabama. <laughs> dropped a couple of nukes in Alabama last <laughs> night. And so we are trying to figure out where to put beehives and Sam is a bee expert and I am not. So we are uh, we're going to put some hives out here so we can increase the land race gardening cross pollination and just make our homestead much much better so we're going to figure that out now and hopefully live through the experience yeah we're going to take and move them over there we'll set them on the uh, ground and then come back and grab the pallet and bring the pallet over there okay sounds good okay. it's kind of away from the kids so I'm gonna grab a couple of those pavers so I can tilt up the back of the nukes. Okay, that makes sense. I need to make that a little even, and then we'll, I think that'll do it perfectly. What do you think? Looks that's good. pretty good to me. I mean, I think they're still slightly tilted. Yeah. Be okay. I think they're slightly tilted back. It's gonna be fine. I actually want a little bit more. I'm gonna put that right there. And what that does is it makes it a little bit easier for them to clean out their home. So they can sweep yep. forwards. Yep. So there we go. I like it. I can see them they want to get out that oh, yeah, so they bad. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're all moving along there. And what we'll do is we're gonna allow them to do that actually. And I'm gonna open up that front entrance. They can come out. And then I'll light the smoker. I have to mention Sam's mm. fantastic nursery, which is Scrubland Farms. If you're into the permaculture plants, rare edible food plants, fruits, pretty much everything. Edibles, medicinals, absolutely. Uh, even for the pollinators, uh, Florida natives. Yeah, Florida natives and chop and drop like comfrey. Absolutely, chop and drop, uh, Mexican sunflower, um, I mean, you name it. All the support species. And if we don't have it, you know about it, we'll get it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I get to learn too. <laughs> so if you get a chance to visit Scrubland Farms, I will put a link to the Scrubland Farms Facebook page below. He, how many places are you at now? You've got... Uh, we're, we're just at two places. Uh, we're in Hollister uh, at a farm market on Highway 20 on Fridays from 9 to 2. Uh, we're also at the Ocala Downtown Market uh, from 9 to 2 on Saturdays. And we're open at the nursery on Thursdays from 10 to 4. And we do take appointments on Wednesdays. So if you are looking for all the plants that you never even knew you wanted, <laughs> plus the stuff that's hard to get, Sam is the guy to go to. Like you said, if he doesn't have it, he will hunt it down and get it for you because he really loves it and he's the real, he is a real plant guy. He's not the one you go in and you see a whole bunch of liriope grass and one sad peach and say, do you guys have, <laughs> Never mind. you don't. He's got it. So be sure to check him out and uh, I think you'll totally dig. It's a great field trip. Now, I put this on here, David. It has a very small opening for them to come in and out, but it also prevents them from getting robbed. So it's a small area for them to right. uh, protect. To defend. Right. All right, so we'll just open that up. Let them come out. Let's figure out what's going on. Yeah. 
you send over here. And it's only about an inch. Yeah. Maybe an inch wide that you've got that opening. Right. Enough for, for them to fit like two by two, basically. They're less happy. Yeah, they, <laughs> they generally are when after a big move like that. What's funny is one's more active than the other. And this is basically an orientation flight. So they're coming out. Okay. Let's see where we gotta go and new home. Right around my head. I did cage up the queens, so I'll need to get in there and open those up and let them out. Why do you cage the queens up? Eh, just for safe transport. So, um, but yeah, that's really the only reason. So from this point, I mean, this is the way, like if you were to buy a nuke, this is a nuke colony. It's got, what, five frames in it? Five frames, yes. Uh, it's but they're be full a size, of... deep body yes, that's frames. Mm-hmm. Five of them. Yes, it's going to be at least two to three frames of brood and then one honey, one pollen. And then from this point, this is a Langstroth style, so you would have a Langstroth, the, the hive bottom, just by itself on top of the, the stand and everything, and then we would take those frames out and put them in there and then put some empty frames on the, on the yeah, outsides so of it yeah, and for them like to build out into. Yeah, a 10 frame or an 8 frame, depending on what you want to do. Now, you were talking about wanting to get a um, top, top bar. Top bar, right. And so, if you build that with the Langstroth frames in mind, then you can just pull those frames out and directly put them in. Yeah, I was I was sent uh, a link on that where they put yeah, all it was of like the... Dr. Leo. Yeah, I that's right. Has the, uh... That was the guy you told me about. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I I hunted him down, and then I just went into this rabbit hole of all these different links and right. books and stuff. And so he's actually taking the the frames from a Langstroth hive without foundation in them. I don't think he even puts a foundation in. He just I don't hangs know. them, and they build into it, and and it goes this way yeah. rather than up they and build down it horizontally. Absolutely, uh, which is a, I think would be a lot easier for handling purposes because you don't have to get a you, you know don't like have a to forty kill your pound box. box of honey off of the top and then open the entire hive up. Right, because all the air and everything gets in, the atmosphere changes, they freak out. Mm -hmm. So yep. you could just you could just go one frame and then look and. Carefully Pretty much. go back. Yeah, or you know, you just pull it out and put it in another box. You know, if you're pulling out honey or whatever the case may be, uh, a lot easier to do hive checks. Makes sense. I, I had Langstroth hives when I was in Tennessee, and I, I we had problems with them dying out, and and they got mites, and I treated them for mites, and then they didn't do really hot, and then one of them died out in the winter, and it was always this struggle. But there was. It was a box here and then another box and I think we had a super on top of it. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a pretty good kick in colony during the summer. And so one day I went out to go check on it and I, I opened the the top really as carefully as I could, but they glued it all together with propolis sure. and I broke it off. And I was really trying to be careful and then I started to pull the next box and it went thump and it rocked off of the rocks <laughs> and the front that I had it propped on and the mm -hmm. whole thing went boom mm -hmm. and it went from to me. <laughs> I just, they were all over me. I just took off running to the front yard. Right. I was like, kids, stay inside. <laughs> They're here, you know. But it was like you could just come out a little upset. A big, a big tube of bees. <laughs> what is it that the smoke actually does when you? Well, it does not calm them down like everybody says. It just masks the scent from the queen that, uh, like an emergency scent, like attack. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> so they said they're like, my house is on fire. I, I, this is time to not kill. Right, right. So it, it just masks it, basically. She might be sending out that signal, but they're not getting it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. And when you are lighting the smokers too, you want to make sure that you're having a, a cold uh, smoke that's coming out versus a hot smoke. So You don't want to roast the bees. Exactly right. So you want to make sure it's deep and you keep packing it and just make sure there's no flame coming out. Okay.
And I'm just basically wanting to uh, pull all this mesh off. You're brave, Sam. Uh, it, right now, they're, they're not really concerned about me. So how soon should we be set up from getting these nukes with a full-on hive? Um, I would say with it, I wouldn't wait too long, David. I would say no more than a week or so, um, because this one's probably a little bit more full than this one right here. This was that swarm I was telling you about, um, and that one's a, a full-on newt. So this one's got a little bit of room in it. I put this on there just for ventilation while we were traveling. Shannon was driving, so I didn't want her freaking out. You don't want a swarm of bees inside of your car. <laughs> Remain calm. <laughs> I'm hoping to move to top bar, but I'll, I'll probably just go with the Langstroths to get just them started. Just started, yeah. And then, uh, and then any swarms or splits or anything I capture. It's funny, I was talking to a neighbor this morning, and I said, oh, you know, we're getting bees. And she says, oh, I wish you told me about bees. This last week we had a swarm out in our yard. Is that right? She said, we tried to catch it, but we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> she says, well, you could have caught it and put it in a box. So, well, I think I probably need to have an empty box just for that well, opportunity. Well, you'll have these, so it'll um, be a good start for you. These but you can use really anything. Staple. You can use a five gallon bucket if you wanted to. <laughs> Rachel, would you like to try to get a shot of the queen before we release her? Let's see here. I don't know if you can. Uh, she's in there. I don't know if you're going to be able to get a good shot. I'm just there. That's her right there. I'll let her open right here, and she should just go right in and start start working. Now what uh, what types of bees did you start with with your your apiary? Are you trying to get feral populations predominantly? We we literally started with a uh, wild hive that was underneath the boys' uh, treehouse. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. You built the, you had built the platform in the treehouse, and there was bees all through it. Yep. Exactly. So we decided one day to just pull it out and see what we could do with it, and start learning about bees. <laughs> and it worked out pretty good. That's perfect. And so. I have heard that the you get you know stronger genetics. People bring in German or Italian or whatever, and you buy a little colony. But if you get the ones that are already feral in your area, that can be better. Uh, that's uh, very possible, and you always have to watch out for the Africanized. Uh, there she is, right there. Can you tell by their personalities? What's that? If they're uh, Africanized? You wouldn't be able to get about 10 feet from them. Uh, these are Italians here. Yeah. Very docile, very hygienic. Um, good producers, good honey producers. Make sure the spacing is on the sides, even on both sides, David. So you're looking for the spacing of the... Of the frames. Frames. See how there's a space right here? These are... There's too much comb in there to... Get them close. We'll them you see how that's going? Yeah. Well, they might have shifted too during. Did you put the queen in a cage in this one? 
Uh, so, this one I did not. Okay. This one I did not. She was good to go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so we'll go ahead and put the lids on them. And I would say, David, in about a week, you're going to probably want to come out here and uh, go through them. Just make sure everything looks good. Um, they shouldn't need any sugar water at this moment, at this time. Uh, usually you want to wait till you know, dearth or at the very, very beginning of spring when not everything's flowering just yet. So that queen box, you just let her out of there? Yes. And then And this one was already let I already let her out. Okay, so then they'll just they'll just smell the residual queen on there, so they're hanging around that that little trap until they're like, wait, she's not here. <laughs> well they know she's in the box, I promise you on that. Uh, definitely. See now this little guy right here? Well this little girl, she's telling everybody else, hey the queen's here. That's she's, she's, trying, she's hanging out she, by the entrance. Yeah, she's she's letting everybody know that hey, here's here's the queen. Um, so signaling, so to speak. Well, this should make a huge difference on the gardens and the I fruit think, trees. Yes. There's it, not really that many bees out here, which is one of the reasons I wanted to make sure we got some. Uh, we, our main pollinator is probably the bumblebees that we see, we get a lot of bumblebee activity, but, but not a lot a of, I did job. see a honeybee yesterday. So I know that there are some somewhere, uh -huh. but I don't know where. And there's a lot of hollies in this wood. There's the- uh, Well, right now, uh, the Yopon holly is going crazy too. They really like the Yopon holly. That's uh, great. And you've got a lot of that around here, so. Yeah. They like their caffeine. Yep, yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so they're gonna get oriented around this area and find find where everything is and this this is their new home this is their new home now absolutely um, that's and there's nothing I need to do there is nothing you need to do at this moment um, just want to make sure you know that you have places for water and whatnot that are uh, you know what I mean to a place where they can gather water you said there was like a pond or there's something? a bit of swamp over that way with some running water they don't it. care there is a pond back that way uh -huh. about 3,000, 4,000 feet. Okay. Maybe not even that, maybe 2,000 feet. That's perfect. Uh, they they'll even go it. to a leaky water hose, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine. So that's it. And that's then it. The, the next piece will, we will try, I will try to put the boxes together without you. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm sure you well, don't I don't know, now that I know that you got a casino close. <laughs> <laughs> It Indian might be a different gaming. story. <laughs> Two words. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, I really appreciate Sam um, coming up here and getting these set up. This was a missing piece for us that we really, I really want it, particularly with the land races and the pumpkins. Pumpkins are over there. All They're these varieties the that we're crossing, I think they'll get into it. I think so. And a few over there. And uh, what I hope to do too is take some of this area and and mix in more flowering cover crops. I'm going to graze the cows through here in kind of a mob graze succession. So I want to put a bunch of wildflowers and things. And and so we'll have the Excellent. bees and then the cows and maybe run some chickens through too. Very good. Just get the whole thing going. So catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll see how it turns out. But we've got two chances to. To not screw up to, <laughs> for success. to succeed for success, <laughs> which hopefully will be many more bees in the future. Catch y'all next time. Until then, your thumbs always be green. Sitting here worrying in the back seat of a car, worrying about the driver and hoping we aren't going far. Cause I don't.